Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today let's put a stop to the most annoying habits even wine professionals do at wine tastings. I have attended and hosted my fair share of wine events and I have seen the good, the bad and the ugly. Wine events of course differ from casual walk-around tastings to more serious masterclasses with winemakers or other highly knowledgeable individuals in front of you. No matter the format, here are a few things that you should stop doing immediately. We all attend wine tastings, masterclasses and lectures to learn and explore. Depending on the concept of the wine tasting, it could be more casual and encourage discussion or more educational with a keynote speaker. And I'm always the first to invite people to ask questions. Not only it helps you to understand the topic better, but also shows the speaker that you are present and interested. And we usually appreciate that. However, just like in wine or anything else in life really, there must be a balance. It is fine to ask a question or two or even three, but be mindful not to turn the tasting or masterclass into a conversation between two people with an audience. Other attendees might also want to ask questions and for some it takes more courage to do so. Furthermore, it's unlikely that anyone came to this event to listen to you talking about your experiences or you arguing with the presenter. So by all means, ask questions and engage in discussions, especially if encouraged, but make sure that other people are also included and that you are not taking all the air time, especially the ones that we all came to hear. Wine is a tricky beverage. <laughs> and if we do not pay attention to how much we consume, we might get drunk especially when tasting some marvelous wines. Now, sometimes letting loose and laugh a bit more is beautifully fun, but we have to ensure that we do not bother other people. As it sometimes happens when clouded by alcohol, we tend to laugh a bit louder, talk more intensely, dance more provocatively, and lose our coordination. Such behavior can be disturbing not only to whoever is speaking in front of you, but also to others who came to learn more about wine. Usually at wine tastings and masterclasses, spittoons will be available around the room or provided for each guest individually. Don't be shy, use them. Drink water as well, as it will not only help you to maintain freshness and clear mind, but also reduces fatigue on the palate and nose. Yes, indeed, it is not coffee we should be smelling in between tastings, but simple, clean, good old water. Well, we are on the subject of spittoons. As I mentioned earlier, you might have your own individual spittoon and by all means use it. However, at larger events or walk around tastings, it might not be possible to ensure a spittoon for each person. In such cases, larger communal spittoons will be placed around the room or sometimes even placed on the table. Now, what frustrates me a lot is that somehow these spittoons often become the number one most exciting spot for people to meet and engage in long conversations or even place to rest your notes for some scribbling. While some might not understand what the fuss is about, <laughs> please understand that I cannot ask you politely to move because my mouth is filled with wine. So yes, use these events to socialize, meet new people or catch up with old friends and certainly take notes. But please make sure you do so someplace where you do not disturb others from enjoying their day of wine tasting as well. Now, this was one of the first things I was taught when I started to explore wine. Do not use fragrance if you're going to wine tasting that day. And this also includes shampoos, body creams, and aftershaves. Avoid using anything with an intense smell. You might not feel it yourself anymore, but others will. 
and more importantly, it will disturb their enjoyment and appreciation of the wine. It truly amazes me how often I notice this even amongst wine professionals. Furthermore, some wine tasting organizers, both public and private, like to decorate their rooms and venues with large flowers. Now, I love having flowers in my living room and it is an extra treat if they smell amazing, but when it comes to wine tastings, it is best to avoid them. Just like with fragrances, they can easily overpower the wine and are not welcome. We get it, you have learned how and now feel absolutely comfortable swirling your wine around on your palate to get the maximum out of those flavors. And now you are doing it so loudly, it seems that you want the whole world to know that. Spoiler alert, it is completely fine to do it quietly and there are even few perks. For example, you will not annoy people. This is especially important at events where high concentration and focus are needed, such as wine tasting exams or sommelier championships. But it makes sense to be less invasive in other settings as well. If I can hear you tasting your wine from across the room, you're probably doing it too loud. It is completely fine to explore beyond labels of large companies and offerings of large retail stores. Do it. The wine world is fascinating and there is so much to learn. However, don't be that person who throws judgy glances at anyone who does not share your enthusiasm for natural wines, grower champagnes, or God forbid, hasn't tasted that rare Grand Cru bottle that costs two months rent. I often wonder why we don't mind the different foods people eat or different coffees they choose to drink, but when it comes to wine, all of a sudden, only lucky few know the best. Therefore, explore wine as you wish and don't be judgmental of others if their journey is different. As I mentioned earlier, wine world is so fascinating and I made a video on 7 tips how to start your wine journey now. Click it here.